Hi, my name is Ian Gent and I'm one of the co-founders of Recomputation.org and I'm also at the University of St Andrews in Scotland. So today on this screencast I want to talk about this chess puzzle but far more importantly I want to talk about how you can recompute this experiment which produced this puzzle answer and you can do it using just a couple of free tools out there and no knowledge of chess or the system used to create the solution. So the first tool you're going to need is Vagrant. Uh, it's a lovely uh, way of interacting with virtual machines developed by Mitchell Hashimoto. I'm a huge fan. Also VirtualBox which is a, a lovely uh, virtual machine environment out of Oracle. They're both free. Both of them are open source except for a part of VirtualBox which is closed source but still free. And both of them work on Apple's uh, and Linux and Windows. So let's just go back to this puzzle. Now uh, I'll explain what the picture is in a moment but because I'm going to download it live to show the, the real life environment that you get I'm just going to open that up in a new window and I'll come back to explain the chess puzzle in a minute. So if we scroll down here, here we've got some instructions. This is all at recomputation.org and I'm going to run them live in this other direct in this uh, terminal screen. So I'm just going to make a directory. Nothing is there's no cheats. Nothing has been prepared beforehand except for installing the Vagrant and VirtualBox, of course. So there's a long line. I'm going to copy and paste that, and we should get a couple of messages. A Vagrant file has been placed. We well, don't need to know what that means, but I can just copy and paste this. Now, what's going to happen here, there's going to be a bit of downloading and some installation and so on. So I'm just going to let that happen. I'm on my home broadband. It's going to give me a couple of minutes to tell you about this chess puzzle again. So here's this chess puzzle. Now what we can see here, if you count, we've got nine white queens, we've got nine black queens on a chess board, standard 8 by 8 chess board, and there's one black king and one white king. If you think about it, that actually is possible because there's one queen of each color and eight pawns and it's a nice little puzzle actually to work out how you can get all of the 16 pawns promoted to queens, but you can do it honestly. So, if we read very carefully we can see no queen is on the same row, column or diagonal as any piece of the opposite color. So if I pick like this queen, for example, this queen I'm just mousing over here, that queen there, there's no other white piece on the same row, column, or diagonal. And the same with all the white queens or the black queens. The only exception is that the kings, this is not an exception to what is stated, but it is two pieces who are not who are on the same row, column or diagonal, in this case on the same diagonal, and that is allowed because they're not queens. Okay, this is really downloading quite fast, kudos to my broadband. Now, uh, what we've said here is that this position is the only possible chess position where these rules are obeyed, except that you could have uh, any symmetry of the problem. You could rotate the chessboard, flip the chessboard, you could also flip white and black pieces. Okay, so this is going to finish. It's just finished as I was saying that. And now it's not going to fire up immediately, but what's going to happen next is that it is installing it into VirtualBox because Vagrant is a lovely wrapper around VirtualBox, also other machine uh, environments like VMware, and it's now what is called importing the box. So it's downloaded it and now it's just preparing it for VirtualBox. <laughs> When it's done that, it will fire it up in VirtualBox and it will boot. Now, a key thing that we are seriously into at Recomputation.org is making it really easy to run old experiments. So in this case, this is an experiment I prepared about a year ago. And I don't need to know anything about this, this puzzle. More importantly, nobody else needs to know anything about it to rerun my experiment. And all you need to do is exactly what you've seen me doing on the screen. The vagrant up was the last line. 
and when it's booted, which is now doing, it's now it says waiting for the machine to boot. Now it's doing that, booting. Now it's running the experiment right now. So we've put in a, what's called a provisioning script, and I have had to do nothing to run that experiment. It's an on boot deal. So what we can see now is happening right now in front of us uh, is that it's found various solutions using. I happen to know it's using constraint solver. So there's one with eight queens, but interestingly, here's one with nine queens. And if we look, the lowercase letters means the kings, and the uppercase are the queens. It is in fact exactly the same solution as this one. Now that is confirmed that this is a solution to the puzzle. Hasn't confirmed yet that it's the only solution. So now what's happening in this experiment, again automatically, it's running again to find all solutions which have nine queens. And these are scrolling through in front of us. And at the end, we'd have to do a little bit of manual checking, which I'm not going to do. Uh, but you would see that all of these 16 solutions we're going to get, I know again it's going to be 16, all of these are symmetric variants of the original solution. And that will confirm that this is indeed a unique solution. Now, I've just been a bit slapdash. I've said it would confirm that, but you have to take my word for it, the code is right. And now it's finished, there's a bit of a message, and if we scroll up, there were 16 solutions, which is the number I would have expected. But the point is, you don't, although you have to, I've just said you have to take my word for it, the lovely thing is, actually, you don't. So if I just get rid of that, and I do this command, vagrant ssh, I can go right into this machine, and now I'm in the virtual machine, just with these incredibly simple commands, anyone who's used VirtualBox will know how pleasant that is, compared to the original. And there's, there's a nice thing here, which is I can go into, I could, obviously I happen to know, but you could dig around in here. This is an open source experiment. So I happen to know that the code is in G code for blah, blah. G code is a wonderful constraint uh, solver, constraint library for solving problems like this. I've got the PDF there, you can see. And I could go into... Uh, G code what's happened there we go and we've got examples and in the examples you could look at Queen Army's fixed.cpp that's one of the files that you need and that would be it and you could have a look to see if you've got any concerns about the coding or any other issues with that so I went I you don't have to take my word for it um, you can go in and study this experiment this is I believe fundamentally important for the future of how we do computer science so that people can get all the experiments, rerun them, and study the internals of them in any way they like. So uh, I think that's really fantastic. So I'm just going to get out of this shell now. That was the Vagrant SSH. Another nice thing about Vagrant is worth looking at. If I go into that directory, which is on the host machine, this is on my Mac, not in the virtual machine. Uh, again, autumn, all this has happened without me intervening we've got the result files in a new directory on my machine. And uh, that's what we saw earlier, scrolling past. So and if I do something like vagrant halt in this directory, that's going to shut down the virtual machine and free some resources. I'd have to separately come and uh, delete the uh, box files, which are a few hundred megabytes. So what we've seen here is that you, anyone can follow the steps I've done if you've installed Vagrant and VirtualBox, recompute this experiment, uh, see if you get the same results, which you should, maybe different runtimes, of course, and then if you like, you can dig around and see how it's done, see if maybe you disagree, and use that maybe to build a new experiment or to find a flaw in this one or whatever it is you're interested in. So let me just give you some pointers, that's our homepage, recomputation.org. We've got a slogan, which I can't guarantee we'll keep to, but it's the goal. If we can compute our experiment now, anyone can recompute it 20 years from now. We want to keep these experiments around essentially forever. We've said 20 years to emphasize it's a long time. Also, if you want to read more about the ideas behind recomputation.org, 
we've got the recomputation manifesto which I put up as a blog post also uh, there's an archive article so I just want to thank you very much for watching the screencast and please do get in touch if you've got any queries or comments